Now, I'm sitting in the studio just to show you how wild life for performers can be. This is St. Patrick's Day. Clancy Brothers, you say it. Oh, rule oh. Britannia, Britannia <laughs> rule the waves. Well, you've just been shot down there. Nelson's statue just twitched a little bit more. Uh, this is Friday afternoon. By the time you hear this, it'll be Sunday. The St. Patrick's Day concert at the Opera House will have been completed. Would you believe this thing was sold out better than two weeks ago? I had to just scream bloody murder to even wedge my way in the side door. And I trust you were great. You always are, gents. Now, that takes care of Friday. Now, what are you going to do after the concert Friday? Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then? We fly, back, we fly back to New York, uh, actually, on Friday night. And on Saturday night, we do a concert in Carnegie Hall in New York, which is being recorded. And that's right. That's going to be uh, an eventually an LP. You're carrying St. Patrick's Day on an extra day in New York, then? Well, Saturday night. We had we were here. That's right. We Since we had to be for, here on yeah. St. Patrick's Day, the following night we're right. in Chicago. We carry it on for mm. days every year. We're trying to invent another saint, though we can have one in October. <laughs> <laughs> Clancy Brothers, I want you to tell me about the new album, Pat. Since we're celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day, why don't you tell us about Freedom's Sons, the Clancy Brothers, and Tommy Makem? Well, first of all, the title, uh, the, the album was recorded in Dublin at a concert commemorating the 1916, the 50th anniversary of the 1916 rebellion. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, in other words, last year yeah, it was cool. recorded. And uh, the title of the album comes from the title of a song that Tommy Makem wrote to commemorate the 1916 rebellion. Have but, I heard you sing this one, Tommy? Uh, have you done this one in Chicago before? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm not too sure. Let's listen to it right now, shall we? Then we can all make a judgment as to whether or not we've ever heard it before. No, I don't seem to recall That's this one. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a, a devotee year, of the Clancy April. Brothers and yeah. Tommy Makem. Last year at Easter we may have. Possibly, but I doubt it. If we did, we did it once, that song. My wife and I followed you to uh, Ireland here a year ago in October. You were appearing in Dublin in the fall. Do you recall that? That's right. We were doing a tour over there. Do you know where Rus uh, the Russell Hotel is? Yes. Do you know where there's a little pub called McGovern's Pub? About three, it's a singing pub, just about three blocks from the Russell. You, you don't know where all the pubs in there's Dublin are? Neil I have the expert on it. I have a pub map of Dublin. One of you has I bought don't a pub. I've been on it. <laughs> Who has bought the pub? Liam. I did, yeah. Oh, I bought where two. Where is of them. it, Liam? Two of them. Two small ones. <laughs> what a two nice way to go. Where are they? Three pubs. <laughs> it's up to three already. One, two, three. Well, they're multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> You're a capitalist. Where are they, Liam? Uh, well, I was a communist long enough when I was poor. <laughs> uh, there's one in, in uh, Kilkenny and there's one in Waterford, uh -huh. which are two cities in the south of Ireland. Yes. So the next time you go over to Ireland, I trust you'll drop into one of my pubs for a jar... <laughs> That and real stay dark to have stuff. a meal. Yes, thank you. Would you believe my wife's family came from Inniscorthy? Uh -huh. Wexford. Yeah, yeah, Wexford, not too far from there. Well, how do you like this business of singing together? I think one of the great problems that I see with groups is that they can't stand each other after a while. Uh, are you still civil to each other? Oh, Barely, yes. Oh, come on. Uh, we, uh, we sing together for a certain number of months in the year, usually into two, in two sections, you know, in the fall of the year mm -hmm. and in the spring. And then we take off for the summer and we go in four different directions. Mm -hmm. This and is healthy. Yes, it is. You have to because you can't uh, keep, you know, traveling on the same plane and in the same taxi, the same hotel, the same uh, dressing room in a concert, <laughs> the same stage. You know, you have, I don't care who the people are, they're going to end up hating each other, you know, or at least fighting each other anyway, which is a different thing, I suppose. I wanted you very badly last fall. I was uh, back in New York. I did Arthur Godfrey's show for a week, and his producer called me and said, who do you want on? And I said, the Clancy Brothers <laughs> and Tommy Makem. And they said, well, they're not even in the country, or they're uh, heavily committed or something, so I missed you there. I, I'm really always, to sit in the studio with you gents and kibitz around, I've said this many times, I'll say it to your face, when you come out on the stage, you bring uh, you bring men, and you don't come tippy toeing out there. You come out to sing, and you bring something to the uh, American singing theater that I think needs to be heard. And I get a great charge We're way down deep. Whether you're you're uh, doing things about the whistling gypsy, whether it's some of the new stuff, uh, this new album. Pick another one, uh, Tommy. Make them. You pick one. I think the outlawed rapperie has got great. Yeah, fire. it's very good. All right, Tom. What's rapperie? Rappery is an outlaw. Well, that's his uh, but name. But they were the outlaw, no, no. outlaw, you see. 
W what does rapparee mean? Uh, they were a political sort of uh, mm. outlaws. Oh. Fellows who went, they'd go off on the run up through the woods and the mountains and so on. They were like Robin Hoods. They used yeah, to take it off the English mm -hmm. landlords and give it to the peasants, us fellas. <laughs> we were on one of those little jaunting carts down in, uh, uh, down, uh, where were we? Where were we, dear, on the jaunting cart? Killarney. Killarney, Killarney yeah. yeah. And the little old man, he must have been at least 75, said, it was very difficult under the English. He said, we couldn't even talk to each other. We had to go way back up into the mountains. And I all of a sudden got the feeling that a lot of these songs that you sing had to do with real people and real situations. And we sure often did. forget this thing. Yeah. All right, the outlaw roppery. Here we go. All right, now there's one more thing I want to do. I have tried many times in my own American way, having been in Ireland just a very brief period, to tell people that this is a land that is so beautiful. You go around a corner and you see the sheep and you see the old castle, Ross's castle. You get up and you look across the ocean. I've tried to paint the picture. I'd like each of you, in your own way now, to pick a spot in Ireland and just tell me about it. I think, uh, all right, Pat Clancy, we'll start with you. Pick a spot, any spot. I just want to get from you a word picture of a favorite spot of yours. Maybe? Yes, well, right uh, where we live, the river sure runs and the tidal waters come as far as the town. And when the tide is out and the river is flowing fast, you see boys in their bare feet walking in the river. But when the tide is in, the river is about 12 feet deeper than it is when it's out and the water is very still. And it's at that time, and especially in the evening, when the, you have the tides much higher at about 8 o'clock in the evening than you do when the tide comes in, at, let's say, at 4. And that's when the salmon fishermen go out with two small boats that are made by hand locally, and they fish for salmon. Mm. And in a still summer's evening, to watch them out in the full tide is very, very peaceful and very nice. Beautiful. Tommy Makem, you're from the north of Ireland. You pick a spot for us, would you please? Yeah, well, one of my favorite spots is um, Carlingford Bay, which is in County Louth. Actually, the border sort of tries to cut in between. It doesn't make it, but it's there. <laughs> and uh, on one side, on the County Louth side, you have the Cooley Mountains falling down into Carlingford Bay. And on the other side of the bay, you have the Mourne Mountains falling down into the bay. And on the, on the Carlingford side, there's a mountain called Sleeve Foy. And if you look at it in a certain way, you can see at the very top of it a man's face and then his body. Well, the story goes that at one time there was a great fight on between a Scottish giant and an Irish giant. And they were throwing stones at each other, big rocks. <clears throat> and after I don't know how many days the, the fight lasted, the Irish giant killed the Scottish giant and he was very tired after the battle so he lay down on the mountain with his feet in the water and his head up on the top of the mountain and this is still the giant that's lying there and he's not dead he's just asleep he's going to wake up some of these days so maybe you'd be there when he wakes up <laughs> <laughs> got to see it sounds great all right uh, Liam you go next well I remember one day when we were at school We'd always been watching the mountains. They're about, the Comer, uh, the Comera Mountains are about 10 miles from our town. But you never, we didn't know what distance they really were, you know. So we set off one day, this friend of mine and I, and we walked. And the mountains, they just kept looking the same distance. But we walked and walked and walked and walked until finally we got to the foot of them. And just up the side of the mountain, what looked like just up the side of the mountain, there's a great a uh, big hole in the side of the mountain. And we knew there was a lake up there called Kamshingon. And up over this lake, there's a cliff that's over a thousand feet straight up of sheer rock. And we kept, we wanted to get to this lake. And we kept climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing, ridge after ridge. And we finally got there just before dark, just at that twilight time of the evening, you know. And as we got the first sight of this black lake, and we looked up at this cliff, a thousand feet up over us, and the clouds began to come over and sort of reach down into this, into this great big volcanic, old volcanic 
crater, which it was, you know, uh, like fingers. We, st we didn't stay there more than 10 seconds. We turned and ran like hell. And we didn't stop until we ran the 10 miles back in the pitch dark. Mm. Now, that's still one of my favorite What places. a memory, I can believe it. Tom, you got a big smile on your face. What are you, uh, uh, what are you visualizing lovely, there? Lovely description yes, of it the was. countryside. But there's uh, another part of Ireland that I like. I like the countryside and the fishing and, and, and the landscape. I remember one day I was sitting in a pub in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> And I was talking with a fellow, a fellow called Seamus Ennis, who was a traditional piper and talker. We were sitting there, and there was a lull in the conversation, and an old man came in with his little paper bag and a sandwich in it. Point, he said to the barman. Barman pulled the point, pulled up in front of him. He opened the bag, took out his sandwiches, having his lunch. He had a painter smock on him. After a while, he heard Seamus Ennis and I talking about a soliloquy from Shakespeare that we couldn't figure out who was right and who was wrong about the words of it. And this little old fellow came over and put his head in. And he said, yeah, I'm afraid you're both wrong on that count. Oh. <laughs> and he then quoted yeah. the entire soliloquy from Henry V went back to his sandwich and drank his pint. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All there. And I looked it up. Yeah. He was word for word perfect. He turned out to be uh, Brendan Bean's father. Bean's father? Mm. Stephen Bean. The people you meet. I remember a little pub up near the Cliffs of Moor. In a little town, it was raining, and we stopped, went into this dark little pub, and there, on the wall, just to the side of the bar, was a picture of President Kennedy, and we got into a conversation with these people who had such a deep feeling for the President. Then we got into Galway, where they've been doing the, all the building and the dedication of the Central Park to him, the, the little memories of Ireland. Those of you who are with us this Sunday afternoon, we've been swapping stories and sharing experiences with the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Macon. By the time you hear this, they'll be back in New York. Many of you who are listening were disappointed you were unable to get into their concert on Friday night. The greatest tribute is when Four men can fill the opera house without even twitching a finger. I think this is a tribute to what they have to sing about. It's a tribute to them as individuals and to their music and Ireland. They are coming back on April the 28th, I am proud to say. So if you were disappointed this time, they'll be at the opera house again. This will be a benefit for St. Emmerich's Church, Country Club Hills, Illinois. You fellows are uh, planning to get to heaven this way, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> so. Taking no you can chances. Sing your way in. <laughs> I hope we'll all have the chance to see you again in good health back here in Chicago. You've got more friends in our town, right here and around the Midwest, than you ever could imagine. Come and see us again. And Thank you. God, Thank you, you love you all. Goodbye, boys. Bye, Mel.